first glance, this sofa looks kind of pretty, but it actually had a lot of rips and tears and stains on the cushions. So we decided to paint it and give it a tropical vibe. Drive the same roads every day. We both get there our own way. We're going to paint that, Debbie and I. It's not going to be this ugly, weird color that it is right now. It's going to be a pretty pink. Stay tuned. We're going to mix this kissing booth with tarnished pearl so we can get a nice light pink color and we're just going to keep mixing till we get the color that we like. We mixed kissing booth with crinoline to get a pretty light pink color but you can mix any colors you like. When you create a custom color it's better to add the dark color just a little bit at a time because you can always make it darker but you can't always make it lighter. I painted a sofa with Debbie Beard from Debbie's Design Diary. I never painted a sofa before. Actually, you're dyeing the fabric more than painting it. So you really need to work that paint into the fabric using lots of water. DIY paint is so highly pigmented that we were actually able to cover up some pretty ugly stains, even with DIY paint and water mixed 10 to 1. In addition to water, we also used a sanding sponge to help keep the fabric pliable. I'm in Encinitas at DIY A Go Go, and Debbie said, hey, let's paint a sofa together and make a video. Why not? Rather than have the sofa all one shade of pink, we decided to do some blending. When blending, it's good to have three shades of the same color. Three brushes will help too. Remember to use lots of water when you're blending. I like to start with the darkest color first, then use the medium color, and then end with the lighter color. Using water also helps you blend. A continuous mist spray bottle is great for this purpose. Blending is a fun technique, but it can take some time and practice. I generally start with the darkest color and work my way out to the lightest color, blending over and over again until I get the desired look. When blending colors, it's a good idea to use the darker color in the pin tucking and in the crevices. And use the lighter colors on the areas where the sun would naturally fade the fabric. This will help to give it a more natural look. Don't forget to use lots of water. So we use JRV stencils and stencil brushes and we use DIY paint. Stenciling can be a bit tricky, especially on fabric, so you need to make sure to dab off your paintbrush. That way you can avoid the paint bleeding out from under your stencil and you'll have nice crisp clean lines. There are a couple of good methods for doing stenciling. One is known as pouncing, which is what I'm doing on this sofa. There is another method known as swirling, but I'll have to show you that method in another video. The most important thing is to use just a little bit of paint at a time. Then continue to add paint until you get the look you desire. But the last thing we did was we used DIY's clear liquid patina mixed with water and we sealed it. I'll be able to sit on it in my white dress when it's all dry. You also need to moisten the fabric before you use the liquid patina. Then generously apply the liquid patina to your piece. Be sure to get in all the cracks and crevices and cover the entire piece with liquid patina. When we applied the liquid patina over the leaves, it kind of made the pink part look muddy. Do you see what I mean? Oh no, it bled because it was still a little wet. Unless it's totally cured, it can still bleed. 
because DIY paint is reactivated with water or moisture. We ended up hand painting in between and around all the leaves and we love it. We think it looks even better than it did before. Using a tiny paintbrush, we decided to outline the leaves of our stencil. This helped to cover up the muddy appearance caused by not allowing the fabric to dry in between. It actually ended up being a happy accident. We love our new tropical pink couch. It's about damn time you get it right. Although we love our pink couch, there's a couple of things we'd like to fix. I kept telling myself, it's fine, it's fine. See how nasty ripped up it is? It ain't fine. It's not fine. It's a little too nasty. We'll just use some fabric and cover it up. We are gonna take this piece of fabric and we are gonna attach it to the front. We'll decoupage it with some crystal clear chandelier. Stay tuned, there'll be a second video and you can see how we do that. Hi, Hi. Debbie. Hi. So did you have fun? I had a lot of fun. What do you think about the whole video making process? So Debbie and I both made a video painting this sofa. Make sure you go over to Debbie's Design Diary and check out hers too. People are probably going to want to subscribe to you. Yeah, subscribe and ring the bell. We have another video coming up. How many videos have you made painting a sofa? I've made, this will be my fourth sofa. To find the products used in this video, click the link below. And to make sure that you don't miss out on the next video, subscribe and ring the bell. Thanks for watching.